Hey everybody, Noons here. Welcome back to Noons Airborne RC. My apologies to everybody who have been waiting on the build videos for the Arowana. I got mine already built. Uh, you might have seen a video of my buddies, the orange one, flying. And his is flying really good. Um, I have all the footage. It's just been taking me forever to edit them with all the other things I got going on. Plus with working on the house and work and the coronavirus stuff and everything. So again, my apologies. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk some turbines. Get some! Hey y'all, Noons here and welcome back to Noons Airborne RC if you're a loyal subscriber. And if it's your first time here, go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button so you can get notified for future content. Well everybody, Bill Day, Arowana from Bad Boys RC. As you can see in my previous videos, I got the green and red trim. And we're going to go ahead and start building this thing. Now there is no right or wrong way to build a jet. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the way I do it. Sorry about that, my dog's trying to make an escape. Come here, George. Come here. All right, lay down. Um, so this is the way I like to do it. Um, I like to start with the heavy parts first, the engine. So with that saying, uh, I like to take a look at the jet and I like to get a layout of where I'm gonna go ahead and lay out my electronics and all that other stuff. Um, one of them, all of that has to balance around your balance point, your CG. And on this Arowana, the CG is on center spar, which would be right around here. And if you'd notice where the engine compartment is at, it's directly above the center spar. Not like your normal jet or uh, normal jet designs where the engine bay is usually a little aft of your CG balance point, and then you're balancing it with the electronics and the batteries and all that fun stuff. Well, right here, all your weight's gonna be right here. Then you have your tank here in front, all your electronics and the batteries in the front. It's gonna be nose heavy. I can tell that just by looking at it. Um, and here's the thing of my HSD jets. All right guys, so here's my HSD jets Super Viper. And here's the spar. And the CG roughly is right around right here where that mark is on your tire. And if you can see where the engine bay is in the back, you got the engine and all that weight. Then all up here you have your electronics, which help balance it because you have your tank here, you, all your electronics and your battery up here, which helps you get that teeter-totter and get it centered. Where on the Arowana, the engine bay is directly over here, and that's the reason why I say we'll have some nose-heavy issues. So as you can see on the HSD jets where the turbine is aft of the CG point and you're balancing everything out with the front, this one's going to be a little different, so we got to take that into mind. So this right here is the hatch I went ahead and removed for the engine bay. And I went ahead and I removed the fuel tank and the UAT. I like to do leak checks um, out of the jet, then inside the jet. And then I found uh, an issue with the fuel tank. I think that you guys should go ahead and check out on yours before filling it up. So let's go ahead and take a look at that fuel tank. All right, y'all, so here's the tank and here's the plug. And this is what I did, this angle piece. So when I filled up the tank, uh, fuel started coming out when it was halfway. And this was the original piece that was up here. And they had this fuel line just hanging down there. It wasn't angled, uh, nothing. So to fix that, I went ahead and I got me a new pipe and I put about a 45 degree bend. That way, now I could fill up the tank and the overflow will go all the way full all the time. And as you guys can see, after that mod, no leaks and the tank is completely full to the top with just a little bit of spillage over here on the ground. So, just a little hint for you guys to go ahead and check. All right guys, for the thrust tube, the thrust tube comes already installed and the thrust tube was put in and it was this way two millimeters it just wasn't centered so I didn't have enough meat to move it over this way to put in a new hole 
I would just strip the wood. So what I did is I unscrewed the two screws and I used my drill and what I did is I elongated the hole. I made the hole this way and on this side the same thing. That way I could grab this and slide this over that millimeter and a half to center out the thrust tube. The issues that I was getting was when I was getting the turbine in here, the tube was that far over and instead of sitting here trying to move the turbine to line it up with the tube, I went ahead and I used my laser and I got the tube completely straight down the back and now the turbine when it slips in here, it is dead on nuts. Alright guys, now that we got our tank back into place and we got we know that everything's straight, we go ahead and we place our turbine in the back, get everything lined up, and I went ahead and I pilot drilled three holes for the turbine, three on either side. I usually only use two on, on the smaller guys right here. On my 60, I only used one screw on either side. On this guy, I'll be using four. Um, so before I go ahead and I actually screw into the wood, I like to go ahead and throw some thin CA to go ahead and shore up the wood so it helps prevent from stripping out the screws. So let's go ahead and do that. All right guys, so for the screws, I go ahead and these are the screws I like to use. Uh, they're just basically um, wood screws and they have an Allen head and I use a washer. A lot of people like using blind nuts. I like to use the wood screws like I said, after I drill the hole, I throw thin CA in the hole. And what that does is it gives the wood a little bit more rigidity. And it'd be harder to actually strip out the screw when putting it in. Now I go ahead and I put them in until they're almost tight. And then I make one last uh, look -see, make sure everything's straight. And then I go ahead and I start tightening them down. There's two. And three. And four. tighten down and that's it guys the turbines in now let's go ahead and move on to the pump all right guys next is for the fuel pump and since I'm trying to keep all the weight uh, as close to the spar as possible I was thinking about building a step and putting this bad boy right here on this side and have the fuel come directly to the back. But if I turn this at an angle, I can screw right into this form right here and I can take my cable and I can fish it through that little pilot hole right there and I can call it a day. So let's go ahead and let's get that in. All right guys, so that's the engine bay. Uh, got this straightened out. I got the turbine in with four screws. From the back of the nozzle guys, right here when the bell starts to bend out to the back of your cone, you want that at about three quarters of an inch di uh, distance. So from the back of your bell, which would be right here, to your to back of your turbine, about three quarters of an inch, and the way I do that, guys, is I take a broomstick handle and I run it in there, find the back of the turbine, find the back of the bell, and I measure that distance out the back. And since we're in the back, let's go ahead and look in that hole. And you can see that turbine is well centered and in the middle, up, down, left, and right.
And here's your top view. So you have your turbine. I put my pump here in at an angle. I'm thinking since I'm gonna have CG issues, I'm gonna mount my UAT and all my other stuff right up here on top of the tank to try and keep it back some and then we'll do the front. So that's it for the first video guys. The turbine bay is all said and done. Next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna move from here on forward. Get some!